Hey there, I'm John Siskovich, and we're going to take a picture of my ducks right now. We're going to talk about uh, a tip, a trick for good duck photography on your farm. It, it goes, it works for all animals and things, uh, but we're going to use this example of the ducks to teach you about building context through your photography in order to better tell your farm story. Look how beautiful this is right now. Ducks are in the pond. Pond's got some duckweed in it. Got a chicken tractor and a nice beautiful setting. As we pan around, there's the greenhouse I'm rebuilding. There's all the brewery buildings, right? You get out of the brewery building world and you step right into dreamland. Absolute dreamland. So we're going to set up a shot right now. I want to show that this is dreamland. I don't want to just a tight picture of a duck's head and say, look, this duck has the best life because it could just be duck. It could bob the duck. No one knows. No one cares. But if I'm going my rule of thirds, I have two points of interest here and here. That's what I'm looking to set up. And my ducks are livestock and they are live, which means they move. And you may have to spend a minute waiting for them to get in the right position. See, I like Chicken tractor there, ducks there. We're gonna snap that photograph. It's not the most grand and beautiful thing in the world, but we're getting there. You know, I got some purple, some nice interest over here, some foreground ducks over there. Now say I just fed out and the ducks were hanging out here because they wanted to spend time in front of the chicken tractor. These irises provide See if I can do this without having to step in the pond. I could use the iris or the vetch here. Add a little foreground interest. I'm in the pond, for those of you who want to know, to get this angle. A little foreground interest with a chicken tractor in the background. Boom. You know, I might have wanted to turn that chicken tractor so the door was facing me, or if it's at a different angle, if I know I want this photograph. Say this one isn't perfect, it's not quite where I would want to put it, but maybe this one is. And we're gonna zoom in. Oh yeah, you got the ducks right there. That's a fun photo. I'll take that. We got all this interest over here. We got the ducks doing their thing. They're on the move. And see when I zoom out, the photograph isn't that great because it's ruined by my project over here. Now you might say, John, that doesn't ruin it. it. It adds real context of what you're doing in your life. And that's all well and good. I wanted to take a beautiful photograph. Now I hear the frogs are all like, why is this guy standing in a pond talking about pictures and ducks? I, uh, I didn't want to highlight my piles of junk today. I wanted to highlight duck life. And the lesson we're learning is to take a foreground object and a background object, balance them in your, sh your scene to tell a story. And for us, the story is the lifestyle that the ducks live so that when I go to sell duck eggs, I can say, these ducks live the most amazing life and they have a pond and I only have a couple ducks and this is nice and easy to manage. And we're gonna zoom in and capture them on the move doing their duck thing in their duck pond. And the longer I'm here, the more calm they get. See some of those pictures have that junk in the background? I don't want that on my website. I want that on my website. And this is what goes through my head. Where's the sun? If I come over here to get more chicken tractor in the frame, one, I spook the ducks away from the chicken tractor. And two, it flattens them out because now the sun is hitting them directly on and my background is the mess. If I go to this side of my pond, the sun is on my right now, not at my back. The ducks will get more comfortable and go towards the chicken tractor and I can line the birds, the iris, and the infrastructure up 
you know, I always include, try, try to include some of our housing because they're unique on our farm in our area. It's something that people can recognize and come and see, even if the livestock have rotated and changed. <clears throat> uh, it's kind of a foundational element. You know, and if none of these tips made any sense, um, you can always go to the wise old turtle and ask the local fauna, should we take better farm photos to share our story and grow our business, Mr. Turtle? They're like, I'm gonna bite your cell phone and you're gonna be out 800 bucks. I get it, I get it. Taking good photos, look, here's the, I can't even see because I'm putting it right in the sun. There's the turtle and there's the ducks. There's the chicken tractor. Trying to give you as much context on these uh, videos as possible for how I make the farm look beautiful in general and then how I photograph it uh, and what goes through my head what I'm looking for. When I'm doing my linger grazing, it's as important to look down as it is to look up. And then when you know there's a story that you wanna tell, like raising ducks on a pond with a chicken tractor, and they, they do, they've done great. <laughs> um, if there's a story you wanna tell, you find your point of interest and then you look down at your grass, the effect your animals are having, the effect you're having building soil. Then you look up to say, this is beautiful. What happens if I squat down and I'm at eye level with all the grass or if I can get that perspective like we talked about in this video where you use a foreground object to balance a background object using the rule of thirds. Um, play with it. Uh, storage is cheap, but man, can the photos and the videos just be priceless. Stick with photography if you're not, you know, if you're just starting out. It's just a lot easier to share things. Uh, it's a lot easier to snap a photograph than it is to make an engaging video, as I struggled with for almost a decade now. Um, I hope you guys have an awesome day. I hope you learned something. And until next time, I'll see you out in the field.